Hi yogis, Katie Gasway here at my studio Body and Shine Wellness in Elgin, Texas. Um, this month we are focusing on twists and uh, these short tutorial videos are intended to give you different layers of how to twist. So this one is going to be for side crow. So uh, even if you don't uh, feel like you want to do the arm balance yet, it'll give you some uh, different layers to work on towards the arm balance or if you're already there, maybe some ways to challenge yourself. So grab your mat, no props needed, and let's get started. All right, so for side crow, um, hopefully you've already warmed up with some twists, either with the full flow video or uh, using the other tutorial videos we have this month for twisting. Um, you don't wanna do it probably cold unless you're already pretty familiar with side crow. Um, but if you wanna work on side crow, we can start by being in like a little, uh, almost like a ball pose. So you're gonna have your heels lifted, hands on the floor, and then we're gonna start to twist. So even if we're not doing the arm balance today, we're still getting this benefit of twisting. So as you twist, almost think of like a prayer twist or that half floor to the fishes we did, where you're hooking your elbow across. And then just like you would for crow pose, seeing if you can eventually get those hands down on the floor. And I know I said you don't need any props, but if you can't make it hands to the floor, you could always grab a block, use your hands on your block or blocks and help you get deeper into that twist. And the more you can get your elbow across, your tricep across, the more likely you are to get into this arm balance. So if I'm already struggling and I can't twist this far, no offense, arm balance probably isn't gonna be very likely today. We're just gonna work on this twist, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep breathing, okay? If we can get both hands comfortably to the floor, just like you do with crow, spread your fingers wide, press into your palms, so this is where we start to get into layer two with a little more challenge, pressing all the way into your palms, taking some weight out of your wrists, look forward and start to lean into your elbows, again, like you would with crow. Now, here's where some different variations come in. So a little less twisty, but a little more arm strength. Probably only this front elbow is gonna be in contact with your leg. You're gonna bend your elbows like chaturanga arms or like crow, look forward like crow, and start to lift using your core, okay? If you're a little bit nervous, place a blanket, a pillow, a couch cushion, something like that in front of your face so that you're not so scared to fall. If you're maybe a little more twisty, but a little less upper body strength, you can twist a little bit deeper so that both elbows, both this front elbow and this back elbow are resting against your leg. Again, looking forward. So this way you have both arms to help support some of your body weight, but it takes a little bit deeper twist to help you get there, right? So one is it more, I mean, well, Technically, some yoga teachers will tell you they're not even the same pose, they have different names, da 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 I'm not so worried about that, right? It's the same idea, it's the same principle. It's just one is a little more twisty, one is a little more arm strengthy, or not even arm strength, upper body strength, shoulder strength, core strength, okay? So those are layers you can do right there. If you're struggling to get the hips up or you're afraid of falling, I might suggest like a controlled face plant. That's <laughs> what I like to call it. So it'll help you get the sensation, right? So either variation with the arms will work. You lean forward and you just kind of, whichever uh, direction your feet would be extending out, you're just gonna rest that temple or the side of your cheek on the ground. And then that way your hips kind of have no choice but to come up behind you, right? So it's like a little seesaw, it's like a little teeter-totter. So you're getting that sensation of twisting and then lifting your hips up, lifting your feet up, balancing, and your face is there to kind of help you get that lift going. Then obviously the goal is that you wanna lift your head up off the ground and get a little bit more level, okay? Um, if you obviously are feeling pain in your neck, if there's like, if you're just like thudding on the floor, right? 
You don't want things like that to happen. So if you're gonna do it, be controlled, put down a blanket if you're not sure, put down a pillow, put down a dog bed. One of my students told me she uses her dog bed. I was like, that's great. Whatever you wanna put down there, just use something soft to help catch you if you're not quite sure how hard you're gonna fall. Once you do get up there, there's other things you can explore. There's lots of fun transitions. One of the things that you can try, that we might try this month, is extending, woo! I'm struggling today, guys. I had a hard workout the last two days. So once you get up there, starting to extend the legs. This again goes by a lot of different names. Uh, twisted scissors, like flying sage or something like that. I don't know. Again, I'm not so concerned about what you call it. I just care that you have fun, you're safe, you're getting a good twist and you're getting stronger, right? So uh, as always with our twists or with any poses, make sure when you play around with it that you're playing with both sides. Um, I hope that there is a layer in there that works for you. If you have any questions, comments, or future requests, leave me a post. Thanks, guys.